Hello, 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 everyone. It's your buddy, Jay Rasek, and I'm hoping that you are having the best day of your entire life today. And today is a great day because today it's March 10th and it's highly anticipated. We may get our first sneak peek at what the next 1.9 update will be, which would then lead us to a 1.9 teaser to the 1.9 DLC. But before we get into that, I also want to make a special announcement. I want to thank every single one of you that have subscribed to the channel and we have finally reached over 200 subscribers today um, which is abso absolutely phenomenal uh, as of March 9th anyways we've reached well over 200 subscribers and it's just crazy on how fast this channel has grown uh, within the last few weeks here um and it's just i'm just very very thankful for every single one of you that are subscribing and if you're new to the channel please uh if you like these type of videos subscribe to the video i know sometimes they're pretty long but there's a lot of great information in these videos that um are pertinent to the points so um definitely make sure you watch the videos i know one of them i had an audio issue so i do apologize for that hopefully that's been resolved um and, and so forth as i'm now uh not recording while i have uh the uh, uh music going at the same time so <laughs> unfortunately that of course does kind of make it a little bit more boring on my side when i'm doing the recordings because i can't you know i'm not going with the energy of the music at the same token but you know it's still I i'm getting down to that point where uh, we can go ahead and uh make sure the audio levels are uh acceptable to to the viewer so so if uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so I do apologize uh, for those that don't like to watch long videos, but you know, if you're just cruising in your car or something like that, or just having a long work day and need something to listen to, to get you through your shift, this is the video for you as we go ahead and venture through the next potential theorized DLC. Um, and this one is not going to really be so much as a DLC, uh, but more of an expansion pack theory. Um, and the reason why I say that is because this type of uh, pack that we're going to discuss is something that has a lot of different mechanics involved with it, um, a lot of different uh, scenery pieces, and of course, since uh, this is a whole different type of avenue for Planet Zoo to conquer, um, it would need more than just, I mean, they would either need to do tons of different DLCs in this avenue, or they go ahead and um, do an expansion pack, or hope to God that doesn't happen but they would actually create a whole different game. And that would be an aquarium expansion pack. Now there's been a lot of different theories out there of whether or not we would get uh, aquariums within the game. I know Leaf Productions went ahead and said that is yeah, probably something that we are never gonna get uh, within Planet Zoo. And he could potentially be right because there would be a lot of painstaking avenues that Frontier would have to ensure to make sure that this pack comes out right. Um, my theory is honestly is that if we are to get a bird an avian or bird pack um, or expansion pack uh, that uh, we would probably also down the road it would only make sense to also get an aquarium pack now when will we get something like this honestly I hate to say it it's probably not going to be a 1.9 DLC it's probably not going to be anytime soon if we are to get anything of this nature it's probably going to be one of the final packs that we get in 2023 um and and like i said it's not really even going to be considered as a dlc or an expansion uh, or as a dlc pack but more as an expansion pack um as a way of kind of saying farewell or to expand our horizons into the future of planet zoo so without further ado, let's dig into, or let's dive into it, I should say, of the Aquarium Expansion Pack Theory. So the Aquarium Expansion Pack is one that I've been theorized by several different major content creators and is definitely on a wish list amongst the community. For example, Delady did a poll three weeks ago, and out of that poll, she said, uh, she the poll concluded with aviaries coming in at 56%. Of the community voted for an avian pack second came in line was the aquatic pack coming in at 37 percent and seven percent was stating anything else um uh now of course this poll was a little construed as it was basically specifically saying what will be the next dlc um and obviously aquariums cannot be the next dlc 
Uh, my thought is the Avian pack would not be the next DLC due to the fact that they would need to uh, pull off a Hail Mary, well not a Hail Mary, but um, you know, the, to bring back players from uh, the ever uh, highly ex uh, expected uh, prehistoric kingdom, uh, an Avian pack would be a great way to bring back the players uh, for ones that they may have lost to a prehistoric kingdom. So with that being said, that is indeed um, why we are doing this uh, video is because it is highly into uh, a highly wanted uh, DLC uh, within Planet Zoo community. As I mentioned, it's probably not going to be a DLC, but more of an expansion pack. And to list what we could see in this expansion pack, um, I guess the first thing we can discuss is the mechanics of the of what we would hopefully see within the game. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about the habitats. Uh, the habitats themselves, right now, we are all aware of how that works in order to get uh, to have an aquarium usable um, within the game, and usually that's with mods. Uh, but typically, um, if you are not going to use uh, the free build mod, uh, you would of course have to use um, a bit piece of land and have the habitat gate above the level of the water, um, and then you create the the entire aquarium uh, below that ground level. So then that way uh, you could have walkthroughs uh, like uh, shark tunnels and stuff like that. Uh, but all in all, it's just a pain. Well, they did Zoo Tycoon. Uh, what they did when they had their aquatic expansion pack is instead of having the habitat gate at uh, at the fence line, they actually had it at the top of the fence. And I think that if uh, Planet or Prehistoric, excuse me, if Frontier went ahead and implemented that type of game um, aspect within the game, it'd be a great way for aquariums to be implemented into the game to be able to get the zookeepers into the aquarium. Um, as well as uh, so forth, um, as well as uh, get the animals in there. I also think it'd be kind of cool that uh, when the zookeepers enter into the aquarium, maybe they put on like some scuba gear or something like that. Um, I think that would be really cool on that line to see the them swim around in the uh, in the wetsuits, uh, you know, maybe re replenishing feeders and stuff like that. However, I don't really foresee that happening. Um, it's more likely that they'll probably just have like a little jetty or, or platform that overlooks the, or the water. Um, then they just would throw food or whatever inside there. And that would basically be the it of the extension of the uh, keeper going into the aquarium itself. So, so that is one aspect uh, that we would need. Um, other mechanics would be the pathing system. Uh, the pathing system um, would... In my eyes, um, we would have to have some sort of texture that would, of course, be aquarium based. However, there's one thing that we all love to make with aquariums, and that's our shark tunnels. Um, and, you know, I think it'd be really cool that if we did a walkthrough habitat uh, with aquariums, that with, if for whatever reason the path is sensed that it is going through or underwater, um, that it creates a glass. Uh, dome over that section of path and eventually could make a tunnel with that, that runs along the side of the path and this would be very instrumental because then that way we could do everything from the four meter path all the way up to the 10 meter path all encased in glass um, and we could have some massive and really well creative um, well w creative walk through habitats underwater so I think that would be very very implemented within the game and I think that Frontier should really explore that possibility if indeed they come out with an aquarium uh, expansion pack. Uh, last thing uh, mechanic wise would probably be rides. Um, I know a lot of us don't like rides um, like the gondola. Everyone hates the gondola uh, from what I've seen in the, in the community. Um, but I think that, you know, honestly, if they went with an aquarium pack, a submarine ride of some sort would be greatly would be greatly useful within an aquarium expansion pack and you know the way that this could be implemented would be very simple now basically just take something like the riverboat ride and just put it upside down and create a submarine skin and then have the submarine just kind of go through the water uh, underwater where guests you know can go ahead and get in it and see the underwater uh, uh, 
as it's intended to be through summer rates. I, there are a few amusement parks uh, and um, as well as uh, aquariums out there that have this feature already. So it's not unheard of to already have that. In fact, uh, the Atlantis Resort in Honolulu actually has a free form uh, submarine ride that you're that will take you right underwater and to ventures through the natural wildlife or underseas of the Honolulu and Oahu area. Um, I do also believe that uh, the Atlantis uh, Resort in South Africa, I think, as well, or maybe it's Australia. I know there's somewhere else there is. So, but anyway, still having a, a submarine ride would be very cool to have within the game um, for uh, just for a better guest viewing um, options and uh, also just all around cause uh, aesthetics within the zoo. So, uh, so the last and final thing that I think that would be really cool for mechanics wise would be, or game mechanics would have touch pools in the game. Um, and as if some of you that don't know what a touch pool is, it's basically everything from you could do like scene rays to like small little round pools that would have like uh, starfish and sea urchins and cucumbers and coral and sea anemones and stuff like that. And, Guests can reach in and touch. Um, that would kind of be a good avenue. And honestly, if they could have maybe also have a sting, a stingray uh, feeding bay or shark feeding bay, um, where you could go ahead and guests can buy little bits of shrimp or whatever and small fish and be able to feed uh, stingrays um, within a stingray pool. That would be really cool as well. Um, so. Implementing things like that would be really cool. I kind of mentioned something like that with the avian pack where they could feed uh, like lorikeets with uh, cups of nectar or budgies with little seed sticks. Um, those themselves would be perfect to have in the game with the avian pack. So I don't see why not they couldn't do that with the DLC expansion pack. So what animals could we expect in this? Well, you know, the, the under seas are just full of life there are millions and millions of creatures underneath the seas and it would be impossible to capture all of them i mean this game would go on forever if we tried to get every single animal in the animal kingdom in the game and that goes without saying with you know the underwater world as well so i the animals that I, I'm uh, going to list off here are just a few of them that are, are top within uh, aquariums across the, the world, as well as some of them that are on the highest uh, votes within the meta aquatic animal list. And those are as follows. Uh, first off, uh, the uh, top uh, voted on the aquatic meta list would be the manatee. Uh, so since uh, Frontier has already stated publicly that they would not do any uh, any type of uh, whales or orcas or dolphins uh, the next avenue would just be the manatee being a mammal um, animal now there are quite uh, you know the manatees um, are an endangered species and their conservation story is just one to be told to future generations of how they have come back um, in record time uh, with the conservational practices that the state of Florida and the National Wildlife uh, Organization has been doing to protect these majestic animals. And honestly, they'd be a great rig for modders too, uh, for whales as well as dolf uh, some dolphins and stuff like that. So um, the manatee would be a great one to have within game and I would be happy to use it. Next up would be the sea turtle. Uh, sea turtles are used with several different community aquariums, uh, the, which including with sharks. So um, you know uh, more than likely like a green sea turtle is typically the most popular um so having those within like a walk through aquarium or habit or a shark tunnel or something like that would just be absolutely outstanding to have next up was one that i was kind of debating on to put in here and that would be the giant manta ray uh and the reason why i said that uh debatable is because of the size of these things i mean they are absolutely huge so that being said, there's only a few aquariums in the world that actually house them. But of course, just like the proboscis monkey, that it, there's only one or two zoos in the world that has proboscis monkeys in their zoos. Um, Planet Zoos or Frontier still provided them in game. So why wouldn't they do that for the giant manatee as well? 
Next up, reef sharks. Reef sharks are very versatile in the aquarium, aquarium community and they are throughout almost every single aquarium I've ever been to, there's been some sort of reef shark and that's usually anything from the white tip sharks and the black tip sharks. Uh, there's also zebra sharks, nurse sharks, um, and hawthorn sharks. I mean, there's so many different ones out there. It's kind of hard to say no to uh, some sort of reef shark. Um, next up would be sawfish. The saw shark or sawfish is a very unique animal. And you know, I've seen them in Minnesota. I've seen them at the Omaha Zoo. And I've also seen them down in Kansas Zoo. Uh, or actually, no, I don't think it was Kansas Zoo, maybe it was San Diego Zoo. But anyways, regardless of the fact, I've seen those um, in almost a lot of the major zoos that I've been to. And uh, they are just a very unique animal to see, um, you know, with all the ragged teeth and everything. It's just one of the one of the most unique sharks that you'll ever come across. And I think that's one that they definitely uh, need to have in the game. And of course, the ever popular sand tiger shark. Uh, the sand tiger sharks are a little bit more docile than their other co uh, uh, cousins, the uh, larger tiger sharks themselves. Um, and uh, you know, the sand tiger sharks, they are just, or sand sharks, excuse me, not sand tiger sharks. The sand sharks are very um, aggressive looking, but they're actually very docile when it comes to uh, being in tank, uh, large uh, community tank aquariums. So, and the ragged teeth and everything, they're just, it's just scary seeing them. Um, but you know what, at the same token, um, I think they are a great animal to have within the game. Next up would be the bonnet head shark. And the bonnet head shark is a re, re, uh, close relative to the hammerhead shark. The reason why I didn't choose a hammerhead shark is because hammerheads are very aggressive to their tank mates. In fact, there's several footage that you can find on YouTube of hammerheads actually eating stingrays, uh, their tank mates. And, uh, and you know, they hunt stingrays in real life. Um, so seeing them uh, attack uh, a stingray in, as a tank mate, it's not too shocking, to be honest. So bonnet head sharks are a, little, a lot more docile and more compliant with other uh, community sharks and, and rays. So uh, no less, I think a bonnet head would be a better choice uh, than having a great hammerhead shark. And of course, we can't forget about the Pacific Stingray. Those things just flying through the water is just so majestic. You just cannot go wrong with the Pacific uh, Stingray, the way that they glide over the seafloor bed and everything like that. And, and con uh, once in a while burying themselves in the sand. Um, they're just an instrumental part within the oceanic uh, marine uh, ecosystem. So having one of the, having those in game is absolutely imperative. Other uh, animals of recognition that I met, would like to mention is shark rays. And um, of course, uh, uh, shark, or shark rays and also zebra sharks. Um, I love uh, shark rays. I think they are very unique animals. Uh, they're a big combination between rays and sharks. And I love just watching the way that they swim, um, you know, because they it looks like they're flying through the water just like a ray. Uh, or um, a manta ray, but yet they have the nice uh, prehistoric look of a shark, I and mean, you just can't go wrong with those. And the, and they're also great community tank animals as well. Um, the zebra uh, shark is a very popular one amongst aquariums, and so that's an, another good must-have within uh, for a habitat animal. And finally, last but not least, the uh, cow nose ray. And I want to say that the cow nose ray would be very implemental for any type of uh, aquarium whatsoever. And they're very popular. And the reason being is because they're very easy to take care of. And they're very docile too. Um, so those are the type of rays that you typically see in stingray, feeding bays, touch pools, and stuff like that. Um, so a common uh, uh, cow nose ray would be absolutely perfect within the game and i think that would be a great way especially if they include some sort of uh, mechanic where guests can feed these type of small little crown rays um in like touch pools and stuff like that so that kind of uh, now that we kind of went about 10 minutes on a tangent uh with uh with just the exhibit or habitat animals it's time to go on to the exhibit animals and uh, first off, uh, first exhibit animal that I would like to elaborate on is, of course, the seahorse. The seahorse is a very beautiful thing, uh, animal, and everyone just loves seahorses, so why wouldn't we have that in there? 
Next up would be the giant Japanese spider crab, a very, uh, one of the largest crabs in the world and absolutely mesmerized by the size of these things. They are just crazy. So putting them in an exhibit um, of a four by four meter is a good size for that type of crab. And you know, seeing them um, crawl around the seafloor would just be absolutely perfect. Next up, we would go ahead and have the weedy sea dragon now the weedy sea dragon is a lot like the um it's a lot like a, a seahorse uh it is of the same family so nonetheless that would be one that we would definitely want to see in there because it is just so beautiful you just can't go wrong with that um next up would of course be uh the mori eel now this is one that's right off the metal list and I tell you what, uh, you, you can't have a coral reef without a moral, mori, a moray eel. Um, now some people would uh, like to see that as a habitat animal and it's a possibility that that one could be a habitat animal. However, I think due to the fact that they have very limited motions and everything like that and there's already the python and yellow uh, anaconda rigs that they can use for exhibits for the mori eel, it'd just probably be better off and more uh, beneficial uh, for frontier to put it as an exhibit animal instead uh next up of course is the beautiful but yet very aggressive lionfish um that itself is just a venomous a uh, very beautiful but deadly and venomous uh uh fish um that is very popular amongst uh, aquarium enthusiasts as well as aquariums across the world and uh next up uh one of my favorites would be uh for a mollusk would be the giant pacific octopus now these things are massive and even though as big as they are it's very rare you see them in very large enclosures they usually will not they won't be in any shark tank or anything like that but and are usually kind of subdued in their own private ha uh, exhibit so seeing a giant pacific octopus there's one in the omaha zoo um, and they don't move around much, to be honest, um, except uh, because they're typically nocturnal. Uh, but they are very, very intelligent. And I tell you what, they are just magnificent to see in real life and their natural habitat. Um, and uh, even in an aquarium, they're very cool to see. Uh, speaking of mollusks, but we're going to go down to my favorite type of mollusk, which would be the cuttlefish. I tell you what, these are masters of camouflage. Uh, where they can actually just change colors in a rip at a at a second note within a fraction of a second they can be bright red to a, a flashing zebra color or they can change the plaid i mean they have been tested beyond all comprehension and have been studied over and over again for their photonic replication of uh camouflage by the u.s military and uh, but anyways uh cuttlefish are very adaptive predators and i think whenever i see a cuttlefish i just watch them it's like they're really watching me and studying me as well so they're very intelligent creatures and having one in the game would be just i i just love it so and the last two that are on the list uh for our last three excuse me um we have of course clownfish and you know clownfish themselves the reason why i included that is because you can't go in an aquarium without hearing some little kid saying mom mom look it's nemo <laughs> so i think it'd be really cool to have some sort of clownfish in there as well they're going to be really small of course but you know it's definitely one of those type of fish that's iconic to uh, aquariums and the and marine sea life so it would definitely be one that we would want to see uh, then the last, second and last, of course, would be the mantis shrimp. Uh, and you know what? The mantis shrimp is a very, oh wow, I, it is a very unique predator. I mean, it, it, the, it's one of the fastest predators, or predators in the world, believe it or not. In fact, its strike is so fast that it actually heats up the water by 10 degrees Celsius um, around its strike zone um, when it's uh, grabbing fish. Um, it is just absolutely a, a beautiful uh, colorization and a, a, it's just would be a beautiful yet deadly addition to Planet Zoo. Speaking of beautiful but deadly, let's bring on the final one of my pick for exhibit potential animals and that would be of course jellyfish. And you know we could go anywhere from moon jellies to um, oh nautilus, I mean or not nautilus but um yeah, maybe it is now. I can't remember. But I mean, just 
there's so many different beautiful jellyfish and just watching these are just mesmerizing um, and I think that having a jellyfish in the game would be a perfect addition to Planet Zoo just for the main fact that they're just so unique that not having them would be a crime so we have gone over the mechanics we have gone over that habitat animals exhibit animals the last uh, one of the second to last things that we are going to go over with is uh, basically scenery items foliage as well as exhibits and so forth so we'll kind of discuss the exhibits a little bit uh, one thing that I mentioned before in the avian pack that we would definitely like to see is null barriers. And one thing that would be really great with the null barriers is that if we do have an exhibit animal such as a Murray eel or something like that, or Murray eels are found in shark tanks as well as community tanks um, uh, within uh, real aquariums. So why not uh, go ahead and include that in there? And one way that you can do that is by ha putting that within maybe just the outside or, or near the, the area of a habitat um, and, and just kind of using a null barrier to make it look like it's part of that aquarium. I think that would be very implemental with the, uh, uh, very imperative in the game to make, just, you know, definitely get expand the, the usage of the exhibit pack or exhibit animals. Uh, the other thing that I would like to see is uh, in the previous video I've mentioned about in the up, in the 1.9 update prediction, I stated that it would be really nice to have different sizes of, of exhibits and that is still true to this day. It would be really great to have different sizes, but of course one thing that I would really like to see is different shapes of exhibits as well. Uh, for example, if we are to get a jellyfish exhibit, it would be very nice to maybe have a spherical type exhibit versus a 4x4 square. Um, I know a lot of, I could use, a, I, I could not tell you how important it would be to create a sphere or, or cylinder like exhibit instead of having a just a square box. Of course, you know, with some of the mods that we have now, um, if we did get, in court, get a uh, a uh, null barrier for exhibits, it wouldn't be that hard to go ahead and create a spherical type exhibit um, but by using some of Nicholas Lion Rider's exhibit pack mods. So, um, but it would still be nice to have it in game. Um, and also, if they were to do a jellyfish exhibit, I would definitely say that they need to incorporate uh, RGB LED lighting in the exhibit and it has it like kind of scroll to the different color light colors I think that would be really cool within the game now would that be implemental probably not that would probably you know change some different mechanics in the game and maybe some under uh, uh, extra lighting codes and so forth like that but honestly I think they did it in Planet Coaster they had lights that could change color so I don't see why it would be impossible to do that within Planet Zoo so that concludes the exhibit portion of this video. Next up, we let's look into the scene. The last thing that we're going to look into is scenery. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different scenery that we could use within this game uh, for this particular expansion pack. And a lot of it comes down to more uh, rock and foliage, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> of course, as I mentioned, pathing would be nice. So maybe some different glass, maybe, uh, in, or instead of glass pieces, we could have acrylic plat uh, pieces. Um, and uh, even though there's not much of a difference between the two, um, maybe it would just kind of have a bit of a different texture um, or a tint to the actual glass would be kind of nice. Um, so like, for example, when the, you're put the glass up, maybe you could change it to a lighter, I don't know, a very light azure or blue, um, and so forth like that. Um, but you know, other pieces than that would be just be your general different scenery wall pieces and stuff like that. Um, I would also think that maybe we could have larger water filters, filtration systems, um, that would be kind of cool, um, and so forth. Um, as for scenery, uh, other scenery pieces uh, for ways of life, drinking fountains. And that was brought up to me earlier uh, by uh, old countries. Like that's one thing we don't have in this game is drinking fountains. This would be a good opportunity to go ahead and put drinking fountains, even if they maybe just in the 1.9 update. So, um, 
other uh, things that we could implement into the game would be, um, or uh, in the series aspect, would, uh, like I mentioned earlier, would be corals. And I mean, there are so many different corals out there, uh, but just like Zoo Tycoon, we had different types of coral, different types of sea rocks, uh, seaweeds, kelp, and stuff like that. All that stuff would be imperative to have in the game. Um, to really make these aquariums pop out and it would be interesting to see exactly how we how the community uses those pieces to create the elaborate coral reef i can guarantee you someone out there will recreate the great barrier reef someone will so you know this stuff like this would include just your normal corals sea fans sea rock and honestly even some uh floor sea floor or um uh Oh, I don't know, like sea stars um, or starfish, um, sea urchins, stuff like that. Maybe just small little individual props that we can put within the game um, to kind of show that, hey, this is the type of animal that we're trying to represent. So, um, or just, you know, just some on that lines would be really nice to have in the game. So that's basically all we have for today. You know, uh, like I said before, if you're first new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because we do have a lot of different content that comes out on a weekly basis. Everything from speed builds to zoo recreations to uh, prediction videos such as this. I mean, there's so many out there. So, And I want to thank all of you again uh, for helping me reach 200 subscribers, uh, over 200 now. Uh, so if you want to be part of that, please subscribe and like this video as well. So then that helps other people find it uh, through the YouTube algorithms. And if you watch the video all the way to the very end right now, thank you again so much because it means I mean, we, I put a lot of work into editing as well as creating these videos uh, and finding the material necessary for to educate you uh, or actually present to you these different type of theories. So watching it to the very end is very, very uh, appreciated and it definitely helps the channel out as well because it tells YouTube that, hey, people are actually watching my stuff and, and I see a lot of it, uh, people watching it. I see a lot of people skipping and yeah, you know, that's fine. That's the way it is. So, but uh, other than that, that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks again so much for tuning in and uh, hopefully today, uh, being March 10th, when this video comes out, um, we will hear something from Frontier of the next DLC specula or next uh, DLC teaser, possibly. So, um, till then, make sure you comment down below. Let me know if we were to get an aquarium expansion, what you want to see. Would you want? Uh, what animals would you would you want? Or and so forth like that. Now, as I said, I mentioned a lot of different animals, and that's why I called it an expansion pack versus a DLC, because typically DLCs, the most that we get is eight animals, or we'll get five animals. In this situation, we're going to be getting a lot, it would be a lot more. Um, so, you know, maybe put down your top 10 or something like that. I don't know. That's whatever. I just want to see you guys, see what you guys have to say about the potential of an aquarium expansion pack, not a DLC, but an expansion pack. And if you don't even think it's going to happen, let me know on that comment as well. So it doesn't hurt to, to disagree with me. And uh, again, this is there's nothing uh, proving that we're going to get an aquarium pack. There's nothing proving that we're not going to get one. This is all just speculation and theorization. So till next time, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again so much for watching. And I will see you on the next one. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. That way you keep up to date with all the content that I release on a weekly basis. You can also follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Steam, Discord, as well as Facebook. Till next time, build, play, and enjoy.